You're welcome back. Well, low export volume from Nigeria has been associated with high rate of exchange uh, of, the Niger of the Naira to major foreign currencies. The 2022 annual trade survey seeks to unravel the root causes of the lack of growth of non-export volume in the country and provide insight into what needs to be done by the government and the people, as well as the banks, and uh, fix the industry, the problems in the industry. We have Bamidele Ayemibo, the lead consultant at 3T Impex Consulting, uh, to give us some highlights from their findings and uh, some of the way forward. Good morning, Ms. Ayemibo. Thank you so much for your time. So uh, let's just get straight into it this morning. Uh, your report indicates that 94% of exporters experience rejection of their financing requests by Nigerian banks. It was it not well packaged? Yeah, um, that was a very interesting one. And a number of people have asked a lot of questions around it. Uh, even though the post also showed that afterwards, some of them eventually got uh, financing because the report eventually showed that about 11% um, uh, of them eventually got the financing. Uh, but the fact still remains that majority of requests to banks are, um, of financing requests for export to banks are rejected. And in my opinion, from what we are finding, it's not just the bank to be blamed, even the exporter themselves to be blamed. And of course, bank and the government have a role to play uh, to be able to make it happen. Uh, this report covers both the large scale, medium, and micro, and the number of the SMEs for we need the bracket where we have this rejection. Uh, so and what we also observe is the fact that a number of the presentation or proposal to the bank are defective, which is where we're encouraging the bank to begin to find means of training the SMEs on how to present a bankable proposal to the bank for financing. But also what is important that I think the uh, bank also needs to do is to consider reducing some of the stringent uh, measures. I mean, I'm talking about the requirement now. For example, if I'm exporting and I need to provide a tangible collateral, where my good can be used as collateral also need to be looked into. And on the part of the government, of course, we expect the government to also provide export credit insurance. I think that to a large extent, we have the bank to be able to finance the export more. I mean, the export sector more. All right, so uh, you, you, you've, you've touched on a lot of things, I must say, because uh, in my conversations with uh, both the financial sector and the uh, exporters themselves, the issue of bookkeeping, proper bookkeeping, uh, to convince the bankers has been an issue. And you, and you talked about uh, training, but I don't know whose responsibility that should be because you said the banks, but the banks are just there to make money. So who should actually handle this, especially when you look at the MSMEs, the issue of bookkeeping, um, following up and being strict in presenting so that at the point they want to get finance, they have the evidence of a proper business being run. Who should handle this? Now, um, in the recent of the world, it should be the exporter. But look at this. The nation is suffering seriously because we don't have enough foreign exchange. CBN launched RT200 FS program. Mm -hmm. If you want to be successful, we must grow trade. If we have identified that one of the challenges is the fact that the exporters are not able to pre present a good proposal, training them by the banks have done this in the past for a lot of SMEs to be able to assist them. So I don't think it's out of place. For me, it would be a support service that banks should use to attract more exporters themselves. In as much as that should be the job of the exporter themselves, since it's affecting even the bank themselves, because the bank do not have enough foreign exchange to fund import transactions, and it's affecting the entire nation. So in as much as this should be the prerogative of the exporter, I think government stepping in, particularly the bank, because the bank now understand these are the issues your report or request have, these are the things you need to do to be able to present a proposal to us that will make us be able to finance your transaction. Mm. And, then the, and then the issue of uh, logistics at uh, our ports. <laughs> I know the other time we didn't have, we had a lot of queues and we still have some queues. And then uh, the NNPC did connect it to construction, you know, around the port area, Papa, in Lagos and all of that. And we've talked about the issue of, uh, um, you know, some of the activities going on, even by the regulating authorities or enforcement authorities around the ports. How much has this contributed to what we're suffering in the country now, this lack of dollar? Now, 
the exporters in this survey confirmed that 26% said export logistics is their major challenge. 20% said inadequate financing is their major challenge. 11% said government agency and the port customer under agency is their major challenge. If you add this together, about 57% is saying if you deal with logistics, if you deal with financing, if you deal with um, um, the agency and the port reducing the delay with them, we'll be able to fast track and grow the export volume in Nigeria. Let me talk about logistics. It's not just the logistics. So now we have a situation in which we are now using budgets to move goods from uh, my two area down to Apapa, from a Kuru down to Apapa. But we observe something, an exporter also, and we observe that so you are using this terminal, you still have to go into Apapa to do clearing of your goods for export, documentation and clearing with custom. So you still have to have the delay and the challenges of getting to Apapa and the, all the start processes that still have been automated. So if we automate the process of spot clearance, particularly with customer and the government agency, the way CBN has done the part of the NXP on one hand, and then ensure that I can do spot clearance with custom at the terminals. The further I have to go into a property is a challenge. So about the logistics is there, and we are now using buying from Mikoro, do buying from my two. What can we have custom terminals? At those locations and the government agents. So I have a one stop shop that if I'm moving my group from this location, I don't need to worry myself about it because now I'm going to move it on water. I should also be able to clear two custom at that location and the paperwork should be reduced significantly. Let me do online so we can fast track it because in as much as we want to go ahead, if you don't fast track the clearing process, we're also creating a problem. Mm. So I know that there are some companies. Uh, that have offered to take care of all of this logistics. They tell you they are your one-stop shop for, you know, dealing with exports. Are those people not able to fill in the gap? I know that the long-term uh, uh, solution should be that, of course, the government should uh, automate the process and reduce the bureaucracy and all of that. But, I mean, dealing with what we have at this time, what about those corporates that promise you to be a one-stop shop for export. I, I know it will cost you something, but doesn't it take the hassle off you as an exporter? Anybody saying that is not telling you the truth because you can't be a one-stop shop. You still depend on custom. Like the case I just painted for you, even if I want to handle it for an exporter, I still need to go through these agencies and I still need to go into the port to meet this agency to do the clearing. And we are saying, can we move this clearing process outside the port? Why can't I, if I have a terminal in Kano, terminal in Kaduna, terminal in Edo, terminal in Ibadan, or your state, why can't I just claim my goods for airport in this location and be able to get the goods straight into the port? So, if we have terminal outside, the NEPC have done the uh, domestic airport warehouse, and we're saying those domestic airport warehouse should be such that we have clearing of custom at that location, not just custom, all the other agencies. So, having a one stop shop is what we should work for us, but the way to make it happen is the location where I'm stopping the goods into the container, custom is doing its inspection, documentation is being done, is being done, approval is being drafted by the CDN, and all this is done at a location, primarily online, and then it will be faster for me to move my goods into the port. So, anybody saying they will be able to do the clearing, you need custom to do it. So, you can't be a one stop shop, you still have to depend on custom, depend on the PIA, depend on bank for you to be able to get it done. Mm. Unfortunately, it sounds. Uh, but let's look at supply chain disruptions that have come with uh, the Ukraine war, the Russia-Ukraine war. Uh, the world is talking about it. It's affecting um, a lot of countries. Is it affecting us or is it just what we have created for ourselves that, uh, that is affecting us? It's painful that we are experiencing that disruption and we are adding to it in Nigeria. I had an experience recently. I needed to ship goods to, I think, North America. And it took about over a month to transship in Morocco, to transship in Morocco for it to go to Canada. I mean, those are the issues that this war is causing because of destruction in the global supply chain. Now, I think that challenge, we should not have control over, such that we should help ourselves locally, so that even if we are going to experience that, we should help ourselves locally to fast track whatever we are doing locally, so that whatever will happen after all, it's not addressing the challenge we are already facing. I'm supposed to do, maybe I plan to do three or four transactions in a year or five transactions in a year 
if we don't take care of the logistic challenges, it's even hard some time for people to be able to do too. Because you spend literally sometimes two months just doing things you could have done within two weeks or even a week in some country. I had a situation in which I was shipping to a country. By the time I was telling the buyer, I was telling the buyer about the fact that the goods is arriving. And he's telling me, look, they have cleared the goods. Yes, have cleared the goods. We did two days, the container is already out of the port. That's also happen when they are exporting. And that's what we have to do here. And I think we have to be emphasized going to the port for anything. It should be done outside the port. So, or truck or, or uh, badge, I'm hoping to to the port straight to the ship side for it to be loaded on board the ship for shipment to the destination. Mm. You know, Ms. Ayemi, but we've been, we've been having these conversations for so many times, sometimes, you know, being in the media, it's our job, of course, to highlight it. But sometimes we just wish there was something we could do to make action. What, from your perspective, can we do to you know, make something happen instead of just talking about it. Now, I think, you know, it's good time we are going into election period. I think the media should emphasize the fact that the presidency should take it as a, a duty on growth of exports in Nigeria. And it's been a lot, CPN has been a lot. But you know, when Obama became president in America, it's still of a committee that reports to really directly to grow American exports. Because in real life, for every one billion dollar export, there are hundreds of thousands of jobs created. If the president does not own it and drive it, I'm not sure we'll be able to have the success we desire. We need to be at every speech the president is making, at every event that has to do with economy and commerce, we should hear that word export, non-oil export. So to be able to put all the agency of government on their toes, in the, uh, what they call uh, the body language of the government, of the presidency, so that they can give the necessary support. Imagine a situation in which we are shipping goods into Nigeria, air cargo, for example. You have a situation in which the airline, the Nigeria Promotion Council, and the, and the uh, agents are complaining about the fact that a government agency charges too much for landing charges for cargo plane compared to neighboring country. And they don't care about it. They don't do anything about it. They need to make the money. But if the presidency tells them what to do to support that agency, they will do it because they are reporting to the presidency. Hmm. Well, I don't know how many times you've heard the word non-oil exports as the campaigns are going on and debates and uh, uh, town hall meetings are going on with the politicians and uh, the candidates of different parties. I don't know how many times. I, I don't think I've heard a whole lot, Mr. Yumibo. <laughs> no, we, we are not making enough noise. Look at AFCFTA, for example. AFCFTA, my opinion is that ECOWAS, ETLS, failed from when such exists. Front line candidate, I think the top three or top five you know about LCFTA mm -hmm. successful. Many countries in, in Africa now have started trading and started in Ghana, it started in uh, Kenya, it started in uh, I think uh, Rwanda and other countries. Nigeria is still struggling, struggling to put together a documentation after how many years? I tell you, 30 years of starting time, only together, but we're still putting together. So it's like it's not the hurry to get it done. We're not. All the agencies of government on their post. The presidency is the only one that can drive it. So all the agencies will have to move at their pace unless anybody, someone gives them a matching order that this has to be done at this particular point in time, else their job will be on the line. All right, Mr. Ayemi, but um, uh, we quite understand your passion there, especially when we are here and we report how Kenya and Ghana, uh, we are the giant of Africa. They've started trading on AFCFTA. We're still talking about, I think the last time there was a meeting uh, of the Action Committee, they were still talking about the strategy that they're going to yeah. present to the presidency, not yet approved. So, I mean, we understand that and we do hope that, uh, you know, the incoming government would sit up and Nigerians will actually hold people in authority, you know, to question when they make promises, follow up and don't vote because you are being paid or because of sentiment, <laughs> but because, you know, these are people you believe in. Thank you so much for your time this morning. Mr. Bamindeli Ayemi Boy is a lead consultant at 3T Impex Consulting. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me.